So this presentation explores Gilgamesh in general, kind of some things that catch our attention as we read through the work. Uh, so Gilgamesh in general, it comes from ancient Samaria. This is an example of the writing. It's the cuneiform writing. Um, this is not a tablet of Gilgamesh, but it, it gives you an example of what was found and how it was translated into what we get to read today. Um, Gilgamesh was composed no later than 600 BCE, and it took place in the Mesopotamia, which is present-day Iraq. Um, the events take place somewhere between 2750 and 2500 BCE. So it was, the events took place 2000 years before it was written down. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, Due to the likelihood that the epic that we read is made up of multiple shorter stories, uh, a question to consider is how would that affect its epic status? You should have already reviewed the epic conventions presentation previously. And so looking at that, even if it contains the mandatory aspects of an epic, knowing that it's multiple shorter stories, does that change whether or not we should classify it as an epic? Just a thing to think about. There are a lot of motifs in Gilgamesh, and motifs are recurring subjects, ideas, or themes. Um, some of the motifs we can find in Gilgamesh are brotherhood, loss, rebirth, death, and immortality. So as you're reading through this work, pay attention to those motifs and see if you can come up with any other ones that you know might catch your attention that weren't mentioned here. Now, Gilgamesh as a human apparently may have existed. There are strong historical facts to support the idea that he was alive, um, though he was probably not two-thirds god, um, which is also horrible mathematics. His mom was a goddess, his dad was human, yet somehow he's two-thirds god and, and one-third human. I mean, the math doesn't add up. Um, so Aga and Embergarsi are kings mentioned in the epic, and we know that those two kings existed historically. Ashurbanipal is the king of Assyria who had Gilgamesh written down back in 600 BCE. He claimed Gilgamesh as his ancestor, and Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh's name appears on a king's list. Uh, so we haven't, you know, found his remains or anything like that, but a lot of the circumstantial documentation strongly suggests that he did exist in some form, which is true for a lot of things. We know there probably was a King Arthur. Um, we know there probably was a, you know, well, we know there was a Trojan War and, and, and Menelaus and, and all of those characters from the Iliad and the Odyssey, just probably not in the grand interpretation that we have thanks to these epic poems. So, in some versions of the epic, there is a final tablet. Now, it sh I don't believe it appears in our version. Um, in this final tablet, Gilgamesh complains to Enkindu that his ball, his game, his toys, something like that, fell into the underworld. Enkindu offers to bring them back, and Gilgamesh tells Enkindu what he must do and must not do in the underworld in order to come back to him. Enkindu forgets the advice, because why wouldn't you pay attention to what you need to do to get out of the underworld safely. Um, and basically, he has to stay in the underworld. Gilgamesh prays to the gods to give him his friend back, and Enki and Shamash crack a hole in the earth and Enkindu escapes. The tablet ends with Gilgamesh asking Enkindu about what he sees. And ultimately, we as the audience are unsure if Enkindu escaped as a ghost or if he's brought back to life. And as you read the epic, you'll see why this tablet is typically omitted, because it doesn't really make sense within the overarching linear aspect of the story that we have read in general. Um, the Epic of, Gil of Gilgamesh has multiple connections to the Bible. We have references to the flaming guardians of the other world. We have... Uh, the loss of immortality to a serpent, we have a flood story, and a woman as a corruptor. Uh, so while you're reading this, I'd, I'd ask you to consider what else you see. And um, yeah. And that concludes the presentation on Gilgamesh. I hope you've enjoyed it. And let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.